party people! Welcome once again to the Party of One podcast, the actual play RPG podcast where the gaming table is always set for two. I am your host as always, Jeff Stormer. This week, I am joined by Sasha Renault for a playthrough of their new game, Spindle Wheel. Spindle Wheel is an absolutely fascinating interpretive storytelling game where players draw from a tarot-like deck of cards and use text and visual prompts on those cards as inspiration points to craft truly unique storytelling and role-playing experiences. It is a game that I have been thinking about and has, that has been in my head since we played it because it is so fascinating and the game that we created, the story, the world that we built is so vivid and rich that like, it's just really good and I cannot wait for you to, to, to hear it and to experience this game. Spindle Wheel is currently in open beta. You can find more information about it in the show notes. Now, in addition to being the game's designer, Sasha is also the host of Spindle Wheel Stories, a Spindle Wheel actual play podcast. So if after listening to this episode, you think you really just want to hear more of how the game is played and more of the kinds of stories that it can create, you can check that out as well, also in the show notes. Two quick technical notes before we dive in. One being, uh, this is the first of a two-parter. Part two will drop later in the week. The other note being, this is uh, a recording of two people living in the city, uh, both playing on a virtual tabletop. There's some mouse clicking noises and city background noises that I wasn't able to fully get rid of. So just be aware of that before you listen. And lastly, a quick reminder that I will be at PAX Unplugged this weekend in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, running some games on demand Friday from 1 to 3 and Saturday from 11 to 1 and hosting a panel about two-player role-playing games Sunday at 2.30. I hope that if you're heading to the convention that I will see you there. With all that said, let's throw it over to me in the past so that he can get started with the show. Take it past me. Thanks, future me. This week, I am sitting down with Sasha Renault. Sasha, thank you so much for coming on Party of One. Of course. So real quick, at the top of the show, why don't you uh, take a moment and introduce the listeners to the game that we're playing this week, as well as any other projects you've got going on or anything else you might want them to know about. All right. So uh, this is uh, Spindle Wheel. Uh, Spindle Wheel is a uh, tarot-like interpretive storytelling game where you use the concepts in the cards as anchors to weave stories together with your friends. That's super cool. I'm really excited about it. Like, you pitched it to me, and I was immediately like, this sounds like a lot of things that are my jam. <laughs> um, you can uh, check out the entire game right now for free. Um, it's in open beta at uh, tinyurl.com slash spindlewheel dash open beta. Fantastic. Um, also, uh, you can hear more episodes, uh, where I am running this game for, for various folks, um, at Spindle Wheel Stories. If you just sort of look that up on iTunes or your pod- podcatcher, and you can check us out on Twitter at TCabbage. Sounds fantastic. I'm really, I'm really excited to dive in. So why don't we do just that? Why don't we, we get, get the ball rolling and we'll, we'll tell a little Spindle Wheel story today. Yes. All right. So. How do we, so how do the, to walk us through how we get started. Okay. Um, a couple of things up top. Yes. Um, for just safety and courtesy, uh, we'll be using the X card. Sure. Um, I don't know how much explanation you would like of that. Uh, short and short version for our listeners is uh, we tap the X card. If something comes up and we are not interested in it for really any reason, we, have, we are free to tap the X card and we can, and basically it goes away or we or we gloss over it or however we feel most comfortable kind of editing around that content. Cool. Um, the other thing about Spindle Wheel is Blade. So Spindle Wheel is inspired by tarot, mm-hmm. a practice especially is suited for self-reflection. Sure. Tabletop games let us project ourselves in, onto fantastical stories. Spindle Wheel is a combination of both. As a result, it's very easy to project yourself onto the cards, which can lead to bleed. Sure. Bleed is when emotions, relationships, and circumstances from your real life spill into the game, and vice versa. This is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's something to be aware of, since the deck, the deck might deal unexpectedly dark cards. Mm-hmm. Take care of each other, and don't be, be afraid to discard cards if they don't fit the tone of your story. Love it. Absolutely. I'm very, I am very excited. I, I'm a big fan of... of, of... In, in safe and in safe and protected environments, I'm a big fan of bleed and of really leaning into the game. So I think I'm really excited, feeling really excited. I'm really jazzed up to get into this. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so the the center spread here yes. um, is going to be the world spread. So I'm going to flip these cards. Oops. And so each of these cards has two sides to it: um, the upright and the inverse. They are different. Um, and if we f- feel like we want the uh if we feel like the inverse works better than the upright then we can flip them okay 
basically we are using these prompts as uh, as anchors to sort of tell a story um, mm-hmm. with them. And we can use as much as the entire card if we're inspired by it, or we can use as little as a single word. Love it. All right. So uh, we have in the center, which is the dominant driving force. I, is that a good place? I figure that's a good place to start. And kind of just going Absolutely. into the cards, talking through things, and kind of seeing where how we're feeling. Uh, we have the, the C. So starting with uh, the center, the dominant force, we have the C. Not a drop to drink, an unfathomable distance, an abyss that light has never touched. I like that a lot. I'm into that. And it's crossed. Um, crossing gives it, uh, it... Crossing complicates the upright. Mm-hmm. So the crossing is heat wave, the first spring thaw, a thermal updraft, a warm embrace, or dead air, oppressive heat, unrelenting drought. Hmm. I think that's... Those are those are very good. That's a very good contrast for the, for the driving force. Yeah. So what kind of place does that describe? Uh... I mean, the sea is real. Like, I, I, it feels like it's somewhere that used to be the sea that has sort of dried up. Maybe it's like a coastal, or what was a coastal town, but like the sea has sort of gone away. Mm. And what was like what was the ocean is now just an endless sea of like sand and silt, and we're kind of looking yeah. out and like it's. Uh, I'm almost picturing. Like the rem- like the dried out remains of a resort town. Mm. That kind I of atmosphere. That. Yeah. What do you think? I I really like that. Um, I especially like the idea of it dropping off much further than we anticipate, mm-hmm. like miles and miles and miles, mm-hmm. so that like it gets into the actual sea floor uh, if yeah. you go wandering far enough. Oh, I love that. I, I absolutely love that. Yes. Cool. And I think, like, I kind of, I, I think I like the idea of it being not a, a gradual thing. Mm-hmm. Like, the sea was there, and then suddenly it was hot and dry. Woof. And maybe just it's... like overnight. Yeah, and maybe it's been a while since then, but, like, it just kind of, like, up and left. <laughs> So you just just moved to it to somewhere else. Yep. Just it was here and now it's not. And that sounds horrifying, but it's it, it's what happened. Into it. Cool. So, um the boon, what helps the center, is nightmare. Fear is justified, omens fulfilled, or a recurring terror, dreams of hellfire, lightning striking the steeple. Oh, I really like fears justified. Like, I think that's, mm. like, omens fulfilled. I think that feels, because this feels like it's like a, this feels so much more present. Like, this feels very present, and that feels like a very present prompt. hmm So how do we want to interpret that? Well, like, <coughs> maybe it's something like, um, there are stories in this place. Mm-hmm. Um, that have have tracked back generations, and um, there are these um, anxieties that have sort of developed um, amongst the, the people who live in, in this uh, in this town mm-hmm. that have time and time again been justified. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. I'm very into. I'm very into that idea. The idea that like that like stories have a power because more often than not they have come true. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I'm really into that. And so maybe it's something where, like, maybe there's an element of this was something that some people probably, like, figured might happen. Mm-hmm. Like, there had been predictions that, like, as we were living our sort of comfortable resort lives, there was this undercurrent of, like, it's gonna, like, it's gonna go away. This doesn't, this doesn't last. Mm-hmm. And we are we are the people that did not like heed that heed the heed that story seriously, and we are here now. Yeah, that's so good. Or they or they did uh, take that seriously, and that's why they're still here. Oh, that's even better. I love that. Yes, I love that. Is that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm definitely into that. So let's talk about the bane. What works towards the center's downfall? Yeah, so that's walkers, stilt-legged fishers, trembling giants, a long reach with a frail limb, 
or endurance hunters, steady pursuers, tireless trackers. I think I'm, I think, unless you feel strongly about the way it's facing now, I think I might want to flip this one. Sure. Yeah, I think that flip, I think I want to flip this one because I think like, yeah, because I feel like where we're at, especially, especially with the idea that you can find the ocean floor, Mm-hmm. All of these things that were at the bottom of the sea, I feel like that could very well be the thing that has kept us around. Mm. Is like we knew that this day was coming, that like the ocean would simply disappear. And then suddenly, whether for knowledge, riches, or something else entirely, like the ocean floor would be open to our like gaze. We'd be able to step to the ocean floor in a way that we were that like no one's ever done before. Mm. Oh, this is also our bane. Oh, yes, okay. Then maybe it's then maybe I then maybe I do want it the other way around. <laughs> Cause I feel like I I feel like the other half of that is like if it's the if the ocean floor has opened up before us, there are things underneath the ocean floor that we have that have never seen the light of day. Mm-hmm. So maybe I I think I maybe I do want it to be silt legged fishers, trembling giants. A long reach with a frail limb. There are just these things that are familiar but foreign that have suddenly survived this disappearance of the ocean. Duh. Right? This is just, this is good. Way more horrifying than I thought it was going to be, and I am <laughs> here for it. <laughs> I love it. I am so okay. here for this. Next is Desire, what the centaur wants most, which is Grandmother's Ring, an old grudge, a tepid peace, or a new partnership, a steady alliance. Well, we... Oh, there's something... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, there's something about an old grudge, which is just... I don't know. There's something juicy to that. There's something real juicy to that, especially when you factor in these giants and these these walkers that were under the waves that, Mm -hmm. like... Okay, a lot of stuff is starting to come together for me. All right. So there are these things under the waves. And we had settled and like there had been this resort town. Mm-hmm. The waves had been keeping these things, these giants at at bay, pun intended. Mm-hmm. And so there the, the 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 story that had been passed around was like those waves will part and those giants will emerge. Mhm. And, like, the ugliness that happened will happen again. And now that's where we are. And for whatever reason, we are the people that stayed behind to face this old grudge. And to see this thing happen. Fantastic. Oh my god. Our method, uh, how the center intends to get its desire, is wildfire. Air scarlet with smoke... Rivers molten and glowing, or clearing the underbrush maintenance to prevent consuming calamity. Those are both very good. Mm-hmm. And it's and I, I'm not sure which way which way do you which way do you think you want to take this? Excuse me. So I think that I actually kind of want it to be the other way. Um, I there's something about the rivers molten and glowing that I very much like. Mm-hmm. Um, but. I think the uh, base concept of um, maintenance to prevent consuming calamity, that there is a series of um, of daily rituals that have to be done mm-hmm. um, to keep the walkers at bay um, and to, like, push them further back, that this is, um, like, a, a daily slog to, to, uh, to perform. I love instead that. Instead of, like, one big push. Yeah, I love that. I love that it is, it 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 is yes, and that that makes it. Oh, that makes that adds this whole tragic element to like why we're like why we are we are here and why we stayed behind was that like it wasn't that we stayed behind for some grand quest or some climactic confrontation. It was mm-hmm. just that we needed to hold the gate shut. Exactly. That's so good. Wow. I love it. I am into this. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, the, the next step is to read the world's fates, which I'm going to All right. find the text for because it's good text and I can never remember actually it. Okay, cool. So um, this first card is... Uh, so 
the fates are like the a glimpse into the history of the world. Um, so Clotho is the catalyst that led to the current state of the world. Mm-hmm. We'll flip that card, which is hearth, a crackling fire, a hot meal, a roof overhead, a comfortable silence, or closing doors, turning a blind eye, keeping your head low, weathering the storm. Man, weathering the storm. It's got to be that, it's right? It's got to be weathering the storm. There was just an unbelievable storm. Mm-hmm. And then the next morning, everything was gone. Oh, what if it was a sandstorm? Ooh. And then suddenly, like, yeah, and it just, the sand replaced the water mm-hmm. in a way that doesn't make sense, but that's what we, uh, like, that's what we endured, was the, suddenly the winds and the sand surrounded us, and when we looked, the sand had simply overtaken the water. That's so gross. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm uh. in, like, I'm into it, but, like, also, it's bad. Like... Uh, first, it's like like watching the storm. The there's all this like grit in in the water, and then it just becomes like s- like sludge, mm-hmm. and then it stops being water at all. Yeah. Uh. Oh, I hate this. <laughs> he said, smiling ear to ear. <laughs> Next is Lachesis, which is the current state of affairs. Fool, close-minded and stubborn, faith born of spite, or. Wide-eyed and open-hearted, unfettered by cynicism or context. Hmm, I could see it going either way. Because, mm-hmm. like, we're here doing these tradition, like, these rituals every day to keep, to keep these walkers from, like, overtaking us. I could see mm-hmm. it being simply that, like, the ritual, like, the traditions and the rituals that we're doing are simply people among us saying, like, this is what we do, and we don't question that. Or yeah. I could see it being that we have ch- that we have been that we are the ones who chose to do this, and have like accepted our lot that that we are going to continue doing these rituals. Yeah, like which which generation is this? Like, do we still know why we're doing this? That's a really good question. What do you what do you think? What 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 what, how, what are you which way are you leaning on this? I kind of I'm kind of curious um, about because when we were establishing that like this is based on this sort of. Um, collection of, of fears and omens i was thinking i was wondering whether or not that was like a, a a more religious bent where it's like we do this because this is what it says in in, in the text mm-hmm. and this is what it says in in the old um the old stories or whether it was uh based in science where it's like this is what we figured out works so far i can't tell you why it works but i know looking at this data that, that this is what works and I'm kind of, I'm, I'm intrigued to be part of that first generation of like, okay, figuring out what works and what doesn't. Yeah, I think I am too. I think it, I think it's easy to, I think it's easy to, to be the people bucking against those traditions, but it's, I think it's, I think it's more challenging and more satisfying to be the people like, these are what, these are what we figured out mm-hmm. and now we have to uphold this in like the direst of situations. So, we'd love to have some citizens in more context, but we just, we, we don't have it yet. Nope. <laughs> Maybe we'll give it, get there. Give it time. Give it, give it time. Yeah. Based on our situation, I can't imagine walking away with this, like, everything's great. Everything's going to be A-OK, <laughs> everybody. Um, and our last card is Atropos, the common held belief of what's to come. Which is Echo, a glance unseen, a shadow trailing, a desire unrequited. Or, tongue tripped with stutters, chest full of birds, head full of fog. I really like a desire unrequited. Hmm. I like that, like... Because I think it, like, we've accepted this lot. We have accepted Mm -hmm. this responsibility. And we've done it knowing that, like, there are simply things that are not going to come to us. Hmm. Like, Like, peace of mind or, like... You know, like, like I, 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 the the phrase a glance unseen makes me feel like we've accepted, like, we're not going to be, you know, having happy romances. Our life is going to be pretty much just this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you can't go, you, there's no shore leave. <laughs> yeah. There's no, like, vacation time. This is the rest of it. And we've, and, and we accepted this with open hearts, but that doesn't mean that we are, like, purely happy about it. Yeah. There's a pain to that. There's a pain to that acceptance of, okay, this is what we do now that I think is amazing. 
Okay. So the next step is um, to place the desire with an event. So on the left side of the, of the screen, mm-hmm. um, there is this stack of cards called events. And these are the uh, the scenes that we'll play through the story in. Cool. Um, so we have um, an, an invitation, a wager, a challenge, a revelation, a conversation, an ultimatum, a trial, a duel, a cataclysm, a gift, or a vision, a sabotage. So... so um, when we pair our desire with an event, um, that means in this step, you'll pair your desire card with the event that best aligns with the plan described by your method card. So when that comes up, when that event it comes up in the game, um, that card becomes available to earn. Okay. Um, to set this up, uh, answer the following question. Considering your method, what event will you play through to get your desire? Place your desire card on that event. Uh, stack. So our method was this, like, daily um, maintenance. Yeah, it was these day- this daily set of rituals that we are, we are undertaking that somehow works to keep these walkers at bay, to keep, them, to keep them at arm's length from us. Right. And our desire is that old grudge, mm-hmm. that tepid peace. So- I like a trial... Yeah, I could go with a trial. I think I could see a trial being really a really good fit. Mm-hmm. Where, yeah, I could see that being like, because yeah, it, I think ev- I think every day is its own trial. So yeah, I think trial trial feels right. Um, and then the rest of these cards, excluding the Atropos, because uh, it's it, the Atropos is by no means a sure thing. It's mm-hmm. just sort of the the common vibe in the air, um, and we'll find out at the end of the game if it, if it came true. Sounds good. So I'm going to collect all of these into a stack, and this becomes the Arbiter's deck. All right. Uh, which I will explain. Um, so during the game, we'll take turns playing cards from the Arbiter's deck to simulate the world's reactions f- for each other. Mm-hmm. Um, when playing a card from the Arbiter's deck, use the world's characters and complications to add complexity to your character's lives. Uh, refer to NPCs and desired cards for reference and inspiration. Leave hooks for your fellow players, Mm -hmm. and be careful you don't solve the the problem just as you've introduced it. Mm -hmm. Um, So, uh, when you draw a card to answer a question, we'll shuffle that into the Arbiter's deck, and whenever we reflect, which I'll explain later, um, the Arbiter takes a move. Cool. And if it starts to get thin, then we can ask questions and draw from the deck to uh, replenish it. Sounds great. Flip those, and then grab this buddy, and stick the Arbiter's deck over here. And next is our characters. Okay. So I've set up um, to the right these two spreads. Yes, indeed. Um, which one would you like? Uh, I'll take the left spread. All right, I'll take the right. So we'll flip these all at once and take a second to read them. We'll leave the, the three at the bottom alone for now. Okay. Um, and when when you're ready, just, you know, start describing your character. I think I have my character. All I need all right, is a, all right. I need is a name. Ah, yes. Anders Alurum. Anders nice. is the sort of official, not official, but like the designated, like lore keeper of of our mm-hmm. sort of ritual of our sort of ritual guardians. Anders did not choose this. Anders was given this. Was appointed mm-hmm. this. Anders, you know, this is sort of a passed down responsibility for me. This was sort of a thing that I I didn't think would ever happen. And then suddenly there was that moment, that one moment where every, it suddenly clicked for me that I was going to have to do this and I'm not prepared for it. You know, this was sort of a, an always kind of a, this was always kind of an inevitability, like not an inevitability. This was always kind of a far away thing. This was always kind of a, a, a hypothetical. And then suddenly... And I've kind of never fully shaken that one moment where it became all too real. Mm, that moment where suddenly oh it was, it was, you have to do this. Yeah. <sighs> you were out there writing theory, and then you looked out your window, and it yep. was real. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And, uh, yeah. Oh, it's brutal. And all I want, the the thing that I want, my desire, is a fam, is a, is I have my desire is Black Book, a registry and almanac, a family tree, a public journal. I think my desire is 
to have that life that I thought I was going to have because this was never going to happen. Mm -hmm. And how I am going to get that, my method is uh, a soft a whisper just above silence. I think I am quietly trying to like while be, being very sort of the very public face of like these are the rituals I, I i can you know being asked very publicly of what is the ritual that will protect us this day i'm also like sneaking time to be like this is important to me mm -hmm. like sneaking time for me which is something that i that we've very we've all kind of agreed is not something we were going to do in this situation mm. oh i like andrews a lot uh, he's He's poor, and I will. He's a poor, sweet boy, and I will protect him forever. I don't have a last name for Vellum, but maybe that maybe that's right. Maybe it's a mononym. So, the center and crossing for Vellum um, are uh, bad blood and cursed sword, which are like a trap's jaws rusted shut and um, brittle steel, rusty armor, old marching orders for a new war. So I feel like Vellum is. Like physically sealed in this diving suit. Mm -hmm. um, That's really cool. It has cool. been for a very long time. Um, and sort of figured out how to live life that way. Mm -hmm. What is what helps Vellum um, is is Duchess. They're just loaded. Um, yeah, sure. A passionate ally, generous patron, lavish host. I feel like um, they are like the money. That funds the that that funded the university to begin with, mm -hmm. um, and that that currently um, funds most things that like in, interacts with supply run, uh, lines outside of town mm -hmm. and things like that. The bane mm -hmm. that works against Vellum is Prince of Fate, deposed and exiled, titles revoked, respect rescinded. Um, though. Vellum's name might be on the boxes. Mm -hmm. Nobody listens to them. Mm. Um, I think that Vellum made a critical mistake um, early on. Maybe uh, ha had maybe not been the one who was prepared for this. Mm. Maybe um, like lost a bunch of ships out on the water during the storm. Um, okay, and 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 so is has this reputation um, that they are constantly working against, um, or is that it was current constantly working against them? They are just constantly fighting against. Um, uh, Velb's desire, stone soup, find abundance and follow ground. Squeeze the blood from a stone. The ocean's out there still. Mm -hmm. Velum is certain of this. It is under the sands. It is under, it just subsumed. Um, that much water does not just disappear. Um, and uh, Vellum is certain that if we get the right equipment out there, if we have, if we give it the time that it needs, we can bring that water back. And their method is adversary, uh, a moving finish line. Basically, every, every month or so, um, Vellum is out there moving the goalposts uh, and pushing pushing the line further and further mm -hmm. uh, down the coast. Oh, that's so good! I'm, I'm, I I I love I love both of our characters so much. <laughs> I'm I'm so into this. Very good. Okay, uh, do you want to read your fates first? So my clotho, where I will begin, or how I begin, my clotho is. Oracle, a small-town seer, a happy medium, a crafter of household miracles. Yeah, I feel like that's pretty right. I feel like, I feel like it's where I begin, um, I mean, that just feels right. I think that's, I think, I, I definitely want to keep it this way, keep it facing this way, because I think it is that I am a small town, I am the sea, I am, I am sort of observe, you know, managing these things, and by managing these things, I am sort of managing our expectations and managing how how we see things are coming right like i'm mm, like you know yeah, this yeah. is if i if we do this this should be the thing that happens and then when that thing happens it's a tiny miracle like it's hmm. we've we've i am you know day by day trying out a ritual and seeing it take the form of something mad of something like meaningful and magical awesome uh my loxus which is my current fortune 
uh, is Moon, a solar eclipse, a, cl- a complete and rapid transformation, or a harvest moon, dark machinations illuminated. I kind of like... I'm going to flip this. I like dark machinations illuminated. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with a complete and rapid transformation. I think like... Oh. I think that... In, in my ritual studies, I have found an opportunity for us to change our collective lot. Oh, wow. Like, there is one ritual that, like, no one has quite studied all the way through, and I'm like, if we do this, it could change everything. Like, it could it could change our, our role in all of this. That's fascinating. Yeah, right? And my Atropos, how I will end... Second sun, a moon out of orbit, starved a companionship seeking completion? Oh, no. Or stricken from history, unseen in mirrors? Oh, it's uh, gotta be stricken from history. <laughs> oh, the the moon card and then immediately the moon out of orbit is a lot. Yep, that feels right. That feels right. <laughs> this, this is not gonna go great. It doesn't sound like oh, this is gonna buddy. go great. Oh, buddy. Buddy, no. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna flip. I'm. You know what? I'm gonna add a little bit of heroism to this and keep it flipped with a moon out of orbit, starved of companionship, seeking completion. That like oh. whatever the cost of this ritual, no matter no matter the personal toll it takes on on my relationship to the community, I am going to complete this ritual because I see it as for the greater good. Anders, Anders, buddy. So, um, your character's Atropos may seem like a glimpse of what will befall them at the end of the Mm -hmm. game, but in practice, it won't be a passive fact that happens to your character. Playing your Atropos is your swan song, your final move. It's the card that you'll play to end your story, and you decide what it means then. Okay. It's It's important, then, that you don't play it by accident. Keep your Atropos card on the table in front of you until you're ready to play it. Okay. So, I'm gonna get a read. Uh, actually, you should place your desire... Uh, oh. On an event. That should be... That should happen. All right. Place my desire. And I'm placing that with one of the events, right? Yes. All right. I'm going to place that with... Zoom in on the events a little bit. My desire being... I think it's got... I think it's going to be an invitation. Hmm. I think that feels right. If what I want is... If what I want is the life that was taken from me, I think that... Actually, I think a conversation feels good. Yeah. Yeah, a conversation feels good. This feels this feels like somebody reaching out for connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I guess I'll I'll read my fates. So for Vellum, uh, Clotho, how you begin is shadow thorns, shadow bound sprites whose blank eyes blink and sharp mouths chatter, or impish creatures in the dark with curling hooks that trap and tear. Oh, those are the walkers, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh. Okay. And the thing uh, is, neither of them are great. No, they're not. They're not super good for Vellum here. Um, I think it is a little bit both, but I'm going to flip it. Um, because I think that um, while while I think that the suit that Vellum is in um amplifies sound, and so like whenever they're they're out. Um, on what what was the water mm-hmm. on the sands? Um, they can they can feel the walkers like moving across the ground through their suit. Mm-hmm. Um, um, the curling hooks that trap and tear. Um, I think I think is is why the suit is sealed. Mm-hmm. Um, uh. There is some combination of damage to to them and to their suit um, that makes it both impossible and also inadvisable to open it. Um, and it's probably uh, what did in the rest of their crew while they were wearing it. Oh, that's real. That's real good and real bad. So, uh, Lachesis, uh, their current fortune is magician, skillful and, and skillful and clever, a scientist, a pragmatist. Or smoke and mirrors, an entertaining liar, misdirection, and sleight of hand. Oh, it's so tempting, though. Uh... Both of them are real tempting. (laughs) (laughs) I think primarily it is skillful and clever a pragmatist. 
so I think I think that the, that the process that Vellum is doing uh, of of pushing this line back has a lot to do with smoke, with like a literal smoke screen. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe it does actually involve mirrors. It's this like it looks very obtuse and okay. very like um like these these big tower mirrors um that sort of stand stand out in the sand mm-hmm. um uh behind the smoke screen and that's that's what vellum applies themselves to every 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 day that's that's what they're dedicated to both maintaining and pushing forward yeah okay i like that and atropos how you will end healing word a chapbook of poetry a shared language unification through culture or a hierarchy of knowledge, an ivory tower. Well, I'd like for this to be uh, a shared language. I would like for that to be unification through culture. I hope that's what that is. I I, I hope that too. I think I think I, th- I think <laughs> Anders hopes that's what it is as well. I think <laughs> Anders really hopes that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, given this moving finish line. I think, I think it's either going to be, oh no, it's a wager. It's a wager. That's what it is. Um, I think that all of Vellum's work is based on, it's based on a theory. Mm -hmm. Um, It's, it's not, I don't think it's born any fruit just yet. Um, I think this is based off of uh, Vellum's personal uh, encounters with the walkers and personal observations of the walkers, um, but it's uh, doing it on this grand a scale is it's a gamble. It's uh, it's it's a it's a risk that mm-hmm. they are willing to take. So okay, that's where that goes. So um, your Atropos card stays on the board, but the rest of these go into your hand. Okay. So your hand is your character sheet. You'll draw into it to describe how you feel or change, and play from it to describe what you do or say. Sounds good. A card does a card does not have to keep the meaning it had when you first got it. You can play them in any direction that you like. Cool. So the next step is gameplay. All right. Um, I've covered everything. Oh no, I haven't covered everything. The next step is entanglements. Okay. Beg your pardon. Um, so our characters' lives are tangled together by lo- life bonds, responsibilities, or dumb luck. To tie an entanglement with another player, declare who you want to have a, di- a tie with. Each of you play a card from your hand that describes what binds you. For example, this is what I need from you, what you want from me, why we can't avoid each other. Exchange these cards into each other's hands. Uh, for you, I, I immediately know what I am playing for Vellum. <laughs> that cool. is the Oracle. Hmm. Uh, and that is which way I want it to face. Uh, I think it is... I think it is Soothsayer, Bell Ringer, Wild Eyed Prophet. I think it is Vellum's research is the thing that has pushed me into into thinking like into like like looking at this ritual that I am looking at in a different way. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but if that's if that's what they're doing, like if that's what they're doing, then that means that this ritual could oh. Oh, hmm. and then I very carefully don't show like that. I, I you are the only person to whom I show that like that theoretical like chain of possibilities. Fantastic. I have the obvious one, which is magician. But okay, I think instead I'm going to give you Prince of Fate, uh, last of a legacy, cursed by prophecy. Um, are the two things that I'm pulling mm-hmm. from that. Um, I think that. I am getting old, and I am also uh, not physically in a place to uh, survive for another 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Um, So, um, I mean, given the, like, high-risk stuff that I'm doing anyway. um, So I think that I am am positioning you to uh, take over for me. Cool. I like that. I like that. Right. I like that a lot, especially as I am like, oh, and that's probably how I got introduced to your research. That is my that has like opened up my mind of like, but if this is what if this is what we're doing, then this could mean something else entirely. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> it like 
maybe feeds into your your fear of never having like that sort of you know the the family life and like the the like the life that you were promised when you came out here <laughs> like seeing me grind my my like being into into dust against this like this crusade this this campaign to get the sea back mhm yeah for sure i i definitely is like I don't want to. I am, like, in awe of your work, and I respect mm-hmm. you so much, but also, I desperately kind of don't want to be you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's really good. And that's it for this episode, but worry not, we will be dropping the second half of our Spindle Wheel adventure, the actual gameplay portions of the game, later this week. I'm very excited. I think this game is absolutely incredible, and I hope that you would, I hope that you're digging it as much as I am. In the meantime, though, head to tcabbage.com slash spindlewheel for more information about the game, a link to try the game's open beta, and for a link to Spindlewheel Story so you can hear more examples of the game being played. Also, be sure to follow TCabbage Studios on Twitter at tcabbage. Then while you're on Twitter, follow us at Party of One Pod, then like the show at facebook.com slash Podcast. head to our Discord at bit.ly slash Discord to talk about the show professional wrestling, role-playing games, you know, all of the things that people talk about. If you enjoyed the show, consider leaving us a nice iTunes review, a social media shout-out, or a word-of-mouth recommendation to a friend. Any of those things helps new listeners find the show, which helps us do bigger, better, and cooler things. You can also consider checking out our Patreon at patreon.com slash partyofonepodcast. If you listened to this episode and thought, gosh, I wish I could just listen to Jeff world-build with one other person for, like, 45 minutes a week... Boy, do I have a podcast for you. All My Fantasy Children is a character creation, storytelling, and world-building podcast powered by you. Every week, my best friend Aaron Catano Saez and I take a listener-submitted prompt and, using some of our favorite tabletop role-playing games, spin it into an original fantasy character, populating a collaborative shared war universe one story at a time. New episodes drop every Friday at allmyfantasychildren.com. Party of One is, as always, produced and edited by Jeff Stormer and Jen Frank. All music for the show comes from the song Infinite Lives by Megaran, featuring the D&D Sluggers. If you're interested in coming onto the show, whether you are a podcaster, professional wrestler, game designer, actor, writer, comedian, musician, film critic, kaiju, financial guru, or you just love a good role-playing game, you can shoot me an email at partyofonepodcast at gmail.com. And that's it for me. Until next time, thank you so much for listening. Remember to fight the forces of fascism every single day. Remember that self-love and self-care are radical and defiant acts of resistance. And as always, party on, everybody.